Welcome back to season two of Energetically You, where we talk all things healthy habits, abundant mindset, and optimal wellness. I'm your host, Megan Swan, a mindset and wellness coach. I love helping women optimize their wellness through plant-based nutrition, movement, mindfulness, and mindset practices that having them feel more aligned with who they truly are and confident in their own skin. I'm the creator of the Sustainable Integrated Wellness Approach. I am also living in Mexico, and I have been for the last 12 years. At 30, I sold everything and went on my own eat, pray, love journey, if you will. And now at 42, I'm still on my first stop, loving life and feeling more empowered than ever before. This podcast is for incredible humans who are interested in feeling more aligned with who they truly are, confident in their own skin, and able to make more empowered decisions for themselves going forward in their future. So let's dive in. Welcome back to Energetically You. I'm here today with Jessica Friedan. I am so excited for this interview. She is such a sweetheart and I have gotten to know her more recently because I had the honor of being on her podcast as well. Uh, But she is the CEO and founder of Project Love, an online business management agency based in Vancouver, BC fellow Canadian. She is an elite business and project manager, process expert, and an overachiever with a love of self-growth and helping others achieve their goals. Her mission is to provide high-level, high-touch support using her extensive project and operations management experience by systematizing, creating strategic processes, and automatizing to help you. The CEO like me, step into the visionary role while creating an easeful, ooh, good word, flowy and sustainable business that you love. Amazing. Welcome, Jessica. How are you? I'm doing good. Thank you so much for having me on. It's so lovely to chat with you again. Um, How are you doing? Good. I'm happy this time we get to focus on you for a change. (laughs) So there's some really amazing, I feel like you are a a compliment to me because those, all of those words that you just used are things that I aspire to, but don't quite, well, very much are not my forte and don't excite me. And I can tell by the way that you've written that bio that these are things that you absolutely love doing that you, you, the project, like the systematizing, like you, you get joy out of that so like walk us through how how you got to this point in life and is this like something that started as a little girl organizing her room or is this something that you've kind of grown into over the years surprisingly um yes I thoroughly enjoyed organizing as long as I can remember I would pull everything out of my room once a week shove it all into the the hallway and then I would reorganize my room and reconfigure everything and just like reorganize it yeah I'm on once a week wow I, I think I did that once a year and I thought that was a lot so we're already on a different level yeah so then tell us I, more. I love organizing checklists that's what I'm known for is creating a plan for everything um down to the point of creating agendas for your trip to Vegas like who does that (laughs) I do we need we need people like you so tell me how you have you know progressed from one thing to the other and you know because you weren't always I'm guessing I'm, I'm not positive but I'm guessing you weren't always on the online space that this has sort of been a transition and um, yeah, how you found this current level of alignment and joy. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the online space, obviously, yeah, I was not in it for for my entire career. Um, this is something that happened since 2017. Um, but with corporate, with my jobs, um, it kind of, my organizational skills translated very well into the wedding space. And I was 
mean, as a little girl, I was always obsessed with weddings. I would, again, when I was young, my mom hated this, but I would walk down the hallways and the stairs wearing, um, what are they called? Sheets. The veil. Oh, uh-huh. Pretending I was like walking with a train and all that stuff. So I've always loved weddings and I always wanted to be a wedding planner. So that's kind of where I started. And that's where my skill set really translated very easily when I was younger. Um, from there, I did start an actual business and I was working corporate as well and was more so in administration and corporate. Didn't really find anything that I was thoroughly enjoying. And then some things happened with the online or the, the business side where you know, had a rough client um, that kind of turned me off from the whole experience and it just kind of soured me a little bit, needed to take a step back and kind of reevaluate what I was really enjoying doing um, and just focus more so on the career aspect in corporate. And then from there, I kind of landed into project coordination and then led to project management and then director of operations and whatnot. And it was just a very natural progression in that area. And it was something that I was just very well known for, um, just making sure that all of these new initiatives within the organization were getting rolled out and implemented properly. Training and all that was getting done with all of the departments that were impacted. Um, so I thoroughly enjoyed that. It just it was something that came very naturally to me. But um, just due to some personal situations in my life with family, um, a family member getting sick and whatnot. I had to work double time. So like two full-time jobs basically to help pay for medical expenses. And of course that leads to burnout. Of course, Mm -hmm. like (laughs) there's no denying that that's eventually going to lead to some serious, um, some health issues and some mental health struggles that I needed to kind of take a step back and just reevaluate where I was at. And from there, I just was doing so much for everybody else in my corporate work. I was basically like working so much for the organization that I was with. Um, And then obviously working at nights and whatnot for family. Like I was just giving so much of myself and I felt like my light, like the light inside me or the fire inside me had diminished. And I was like, I just need to do something for me. Like, I feel like I'm spread so thin for everybody else and there's nothing left for me. And I decided at that point, um, to start up a blog. So it was something that I had wanted to do for quite some time, um, while I was in the wedding industry is to start a wedding blog and turn it into a magazine. That was my like big vision that I was really mm. excited about that I had to let go of when my family member got sick. So then I was like, you know what, I'm just going to do it. I'm just going to start this blog. I'm just going to have fun with it. It's going to be something I'm passionate about um, and excited about. And I'm just going to roll with it. I had no idea what I was doing. <laughs> Absolutely zero clue about the online space, social media, like none of that. Um, but I took it on and it just kind of evolved slowly over time. And I went from like weddings to then interviewing like industry experts and learning about like the business side and like how they became entrepreneurs and their self-love um, practice and like all that type of stuff. And then I hired a coach because I was like, you know what, I'm really enjoying this. This is something that you know, this is turning out to be something more than what I expected. I'd love to see this kind of go somewhere because I was seeing online all these entrepreneurs starting these blogs and these businesses and being successful. And I'm like, I can do this, right? Like, I love it. Um, so I hired a coach and we started reviewing everything that I was doing. And she's like, well, why don't you start a podcast? And I was like, oh, I love that. And I'm like, that sounds as- like it's outside my comfort zone, but <laughs> Totally put the outside my comfort zone. Um, I have no problem speaking in front of lots of people, training departments and whatnot. But the moment that you get a mic or a camera in front of me, which is funny because we're talking. That's now, what we're doing right now. Yeah. Ears go red and like everything just disconnects from my mouth and I just ramble on and I have no idea what I'm talking about. It's a really bad scene. And I remember, yeah, this happened to me once during um, a speaking engagement for corporate. And it was pretty funny looking back now. Um, but I was like, yeah, I don't know about that. I'll think about it. Procrastinated for a while and then decided to just bite the bullet and to take it on, launch my podcast that evolved into having more so conversations about self-love and entrepreneurship and steering slowly away from like love relationships and marriage. Um, and I really needed 
that personal development work, I really like it was kind of like from the selfish perspective in a way, starting this podcast and inviting all these experts onto um, my podcast to talk about certain things that I needed help with, like I needed mm-hmm. to learn about, um, which really, really helped me a lot. And I know that it helps a lot of people hearing about those experiences as well. So it kind of morphed into that. And then I was like, so how do I actually like turn this into a business? Like, what am I doing? And I hired another coach. <laughs> so I've invested in me, which is a lot of like, as I've tried to figure out my own journey. Um, but she was like, we're trying to identify exactly what, what are you good at? What are your innate skills? What comes naturally to you? What do you love doing? What are you like known for by your friends and your colleagues? And I'm like, well, I'm a really good planner. Like I'm, I'm really good at like identifying your goals, which a project always has a goal and creating a roadmap, like a checklist, everything that need, you need to accomplish in order to get to that goal. So then we were like, okay, well, what about a goal coach? I'm like, okay, so it felt a little closer, but I was like, mm, still doesn't feel right. There's something missing. It just didn't land quite fully for me. And I was still like self-discovery, still working on the self-growth and whatnot um, journey. And eventually I became, I had an interview with an online business manager on my podcast. And I was like, what the heck is this, <laughs> right? <laughs> because there's so many roles in the online space. It's mm-hmm. it's amazing the different types of businesses that are available. And what she was talking about, how she helped entrepreneurs and what she did with her business. I was like, this is I exactly could do that. <laughs> in the offline space. I'm like, it's mm-hmm. the exact same thing, but I'm doing it like you're doing it for the online space. So from there, the light bulb kind of hit and launched my business within probably a good three months or so from that. So relaunched the actual business again, and then landed my first client within two days, booked out services within three, no, two months. Yeah, two months. So it kind of just like, once it clicks, it really clicks. Like everything Mm -hmm. just falls into place and yeah, so that's been my very long pivoting journey, getting to where I am at today. But the whole experience really taught me a lot about myself. It gave me the space that I needed to do that inner work to be able to get to where I'm at today, um, to be able to become an entrepreneur, a CEO of my business. Mm, I love that story. Can you tell us a little bit, each time you decided like to hire a coach, was there in the decision process there were, was there a hesitation or you just were very clear that you needed outside help? And how did you go about finding the given expert in that thing you needed help with? Um, I knew I like, I have no problems admitting to myself that I know I need outside help type thing um, because you can't know it all, right? Like there's lots of experts out there and it's so great to be able to learn from them. Um, So I follow people that really inspire me online and I follow them for a while and I really dive into how they educate, how they show up, the types of things that they teach about and whatnot. So I had been following my very first coach. I had been following her for quite some time. And um, of course, the, the dollar investment is when you're new to investing and you have some inner work that you need to do around money and scarcity and all that type of stuff. Um, yeah, I was I was very kind of scared and hesitant at first to give that money away, which is hilarious because it was like a few hundred dollars at that point. And now I'm like at 20 grand. That is just like no problems to invest. But yeah, it it definitely you have hesitations at first um, and it is scary to invest in yourself. But that just means that you have a little bit of work to do. Um, and it's not something that's going to be there forever as long as you do that inner work. But I highly recommend investing in people that are going to be that mentor for you, that are going to help you along the way to figure out your own journey and to share their experience and their advice, um, things that they're experts in, because it makes it so much easier. Trying to figure it out by yourself, trying to spend hours Googling all of the different advice that people have for you. Um, and then filtering them. You can get very much lost in the process and you can develop kind of like comparisonitis in a way. And it's a whole rabbit hole you go down to go down through. So I highly recommend just kind of picking your people that 
are a good fit um, for what you are trying to create for yourself and the values that you have for yourself and your business, and then bringing them on to the journey with you. Amazing. I love that. And I totally agree that when, that every time I invested, it was, you know, there was some work that needed to be done and very much the same. Like now it was such like a big energetic decision for the first amount that and now when I invest without really even thinking that much about it, it's crazy. Um, so tell us like what makes a good checklist? What's your process in, in creating checklists? Cause I have, they have a warm place in my heart where my mom is relatively obsessed with checklists. She kind of, she derives joy out of making a checklist out of what she needs to do in a given day, like all the things. So how do you help people figure out what needs to be on their checklist in their business, for example? Yeah. So with my clients, um, we start off with obviously a discovery call where I can learn about how, what they feel they're struggling with in their business. Um, what are their pain points? You know, what are their goals? What is the overall vision that they have? Um, and really just diving deep into that. And then once we begin working together, doing a full audit of their business as well to identify if it's aligned with where they feel that they are struggling with? Are there other areas or gaps in their business that they are not aware of that we could also be working on? Um, from there, we determine basically, um, based on the, the time frame that we're partnering together, um, we identify the priorities. So what are the main things that are going to create a higher return on investment because it is an investment of time and work on their behalf um, to achieve those goals? Um, so what are the prioritized goals? And from there, we break it down into three months. So each month we focus on a certain aspect. So for example, if I have a real estate agent that is coming to me, which is one of my ideal clients, and they are needing help with creating the systems in their business. So their business systems, creating the processes, the templates, the automations, the tech tools and whatnot. Um, and just creating the foundational elements that a lot of them often are lacking. Um, we would start off with, first of all, the biggest piece of the puzzle is identifying um, their services. So identifying exactly what that client experience journey is when they are working with a client, whether they're a buyer or a seller, identifying that entire flow of the process, all of the touch points that are involved um, and everything that they need to get done within that transaction. What, what they're working on with that client. From there, we'll then in month one, develop that whole process and then implement it into the system. So create their tech tool, which I always recommend Pipedrive as their CRM, um, just because of the user um, usability aspects of it. It's a lot easier to navigate than a lot of CRMs out there. Um, from So we'll implement in month two or month one, we'll identify and implement the tech tool. And then month two, while they're testing out the processes that we've mapped out for them, making sure that it actually fits because you can have this big vision for it, but until you actually work it to see if it actually like meets your needs and supports the client relationship really effectively, you just don't know. So month two for them is working on that. And we identify the email templates that they need to put in place, the marketing collateral to support that process. Um, so that's part two. And then month three is creating the um, project management tool for them to help them focus on their business as a CEO of their business. So implementing that tech tool, which I always recommend click up as a PM tool. Um, and then from there, looking at their branding as well. So do they have a brand guide in place? Is their brand coming across co consistently and cohesively across all of the channels that they're showing up on, across all of the presentations, the marketing collateral that they have? Um, so making sure that that is solidified and they have a guide to go from so that anything new that they create outside of a relationship um, will be cohesive with everything that they are envisioning for their brand. Um, and then we'll identify templates that they need. So do they need the social media templates, Pinterest, all those types of things, and we'll create those for them. And then we'll identify um, any other little things that they, we need to work on um, in order to help them get to the goals. So is it like their newsletter sequence? So when a new, um, a new member joins their newsletter, do they need to develop a welcome sequence? Um, do they need to create a marketing 
content calendar and a marketing um, strategy in order to increase their exposure online. So it just depends um, what additional items we have to work on, but we break it down by month. And then from there, we break down all the actionable steps that need to be achieved within that month based on that goal. Um, and we revisit, constantly revisit to make sure that we're staying on track um, and nothing has shifted. Because sometimes you'll get to month two and you're like, oh, I actually think that this is more of a prioritized goals. Things might change in their business and we'll need to kind of readjust. Um, so definitely use ClickUp to help with creating roadmaps or checklists for anything that you achieve, need to achieve in your business. It helps you stay on track um, and it helps make sure that you are actually moving the needle forward with whatever goals you set out. Hmm. Okay, so can you tell, talk to us a little bit more generally about how you know, systems and organization really allow you to be in a more state of ease and flow, because I think for some people else like myself, (laughs) before I really came around to that, you know, you sometimes think that it seems like more work to put these systems in place than it's worth until you've done it, of course. And then it just, you know, sells itself. But what, what do you say to someone who is, you know, resistant to everything being systemized? Yeah, absolutely. And yes, it is work. It is work at first, um, but it Mm -hmm. does pay off, right? Um, A lot of my clients come to me with zero systems in place, zero processes mapped out. Um, And a lot of them feel very lost in their business. So if they're dealing with clients, they don't know where their clients are at at any given point. They have post-its on the walls telling them, do this or do this, or you need to check with this client. They have multiple notebooks with notes in them and whatnot, which can be very difficult to keep on top of. That's when you start missing things with clients. That's when you start creating a very negative client experience because your client is wondering where things are at. They're checking in with you and you're you're quite not sure as well until you like look through all of your notebooks to find out exactly where things are at for them. They stay up at night and they're like, did I forget to do something? I feel like I forgot to do something, right? So that- I probably did. (laughs) Yes, a lot of the times they did. And I mean, entrepreneurs, they need that creative space in their brain to do what their their zone of genius is. They became an entrepreneur because they have a zone of genius. And that could be coaching other people. That could be selling a product. You know, like it's very specific. And having to worry and keep all this brain- space um, focused on like the admin stuff, the back end piece, wondering kind of where things are at, what do I need to do next, all that type of stuff, it hinders them creatively, right? So you, when you put systems in place, you don't have to worry about that anymore, right? You've already identified exactly what that client experience journey is. You've already made sure that you've elevated to really create a wow experience so that you can have repeat or referral business so that you're not constantly having to sell yourself to get new leads in. Um, your system is set up to tell you exactly what you need to do next and where things are at with any given client. So you don't have to worry about it anymore. It's it's all there for you, which allows you to be able to focus on what you truly do best. And that is serving your clients or um, like coaching or selling products or anything like that. It just allows you that time and that space to be able to do what you're what you love. Right. Amazing. So walk us through, do you have, I mean, I understand you have, you coach people through this, but do you also have done for you type services and how can someone start working with you if they're maybe like not sure they're ready for like the whole one-on-one? Is there something that you offer them to get to know you better and, and really start to appreciate how amazing you are and how important systems are in the business. <laughs> um, so I do one-on-ones right now. My client, working with my clients, it is a one-on-one process at the, the moment. Um, just making sure that we're customizing the experience to exactly what they truly need in their business, which even if I'm working with two different coaches, they have different services. They want to approach the client relationship differently. They want to create different experiences. So for right now, it's one-on-one. I am creating sort of like a course that will help them create 
their systems on their own with obviously my guidance through some group calls and whatnot. But I definitely think there's a lot of value in such a big piece of your business. If you're very hesitant about it, if you're you know truly is just not your forte and you just don't have the bandwidth and it's just something that you're going to like dredge the whole time, I highly recommend working one-on-one with someone because I take off that load from them. You're there kind of guiding me as to what you want to see happen, but I'm doing that work for you. Mm, Love that. So confession time, Jessica, is there somewhere in your life that's not organized some aspect of your I have a closet right now that I shove everything into (laughs) (laughs) my boyfriend comes over and he'll be like yeah this is uh what is going on in here (laughs) like the Monica (laughs) the Monica closet where everything else is organized and this one closet just houses like I don't know everything Oh my goodness. I'm sure you get accused of being Monica quite a bit. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and I'm not mad about it. I get very excited yeah. about and folders and pens and label makers. I like had my own personal label maker. <laughs> yeah. And, and your graphics are just so beautiful. And I think perfectly reflect this ease and flow and, you know, <laughs> Zen, Zen vibes based on, you know, getting, getting everything in order and having clarity in your business. And to your point, you know, once you know, you have a system telling you what needs to be done instead of feeling lost and trying to figure that out on your own, it's really powerful. Yeah. It makes business fun again, right? Like the worst thing is for you to start a business and to get so overwhelmed and stressed out from it you start to hate it, right? There's, there's a way to fix it. So why not do that so that you can truly enjoy what you're creating and what you're building for your future. And so do you work with um, people at sort of any stage of the game? I'm guessing it might surprise you sometimes how far some people are into the game and have no client management system or, you know, standard operating procedures or these kind of things. Um, So do you generally work with people that are just starting out or it really varies? It varies. I've had clients that are six figure a year. I've had clients that are just starting out, um, which is always beneficial to start from the get-go, but there's no break bad habits. (laughs) Well, I mean, you'll always have habits that you need to work through and whatnot, but, and the processes evolve. So even if you start off, as you grow and evolve your business, your processes, the way you manage your business, the way you work with clients, that will evolve as well as you continue to elevate. So it's never kind of like a one and done. You're always going to be refining and fine tuning. So I highly recommend no matter what stage you're at in your business, if you don't have systems in place, if you don't have the processes, the tech tools to support you, now's the time, regardless of where you're at. Amazing. Well, any last parting thoughts on the joys of organization? <laughs> um, the joys of organization. Now take the, take the action now. That's all I can say is, yeah, take the action now so that you can start getting back to what you enjoy doing um, and have the systems in place to support you so that you're able to do that. What do you mean take the action now? Like take the action in either documenting your processes, implementing the tech tools, or hire somebody to help you do that. But it's time now to to do that before you get to a point where you don't like your business anymore, right? Where it's like too much of a hassle for you. Well, that it can get to a point where you as an individual are indispensable. Mm -hmm. And it's just not much of an insurance policy on that if like everything disappears if you can't be there, right? Exactly. It's so liberating. I know it's it's been so um important for me and my business to really feel like I have that flexibility because there's of course the theoretical flexibility that I can show up what I want, but you know, to maintain uh to have things running even though when I'm not actually either physically in front of my computer or 
um, even actively working on my business, you know, it's because I have these systems in place that things happen, even though it's not a day I'm working. Exactly. And most entrepreneurs start their businesses because they want freedom in their schedule, in their life. They want to be able to have a life outside of work. So why not put in the systems in place so that you can enjoy that, so that you can have that flexibility, so that you're not being run by your business. You know what I mean? Like you're Mm -hmm. running your business and you're able to step away and not be the bottleneck where everything stops if you're not sitting in front of your computer. Yes. Might be knocking on your door later when things (laughs) fine tune a few things. (laughs) Uh, well, I really appreciate you and your zone of genius because I, I, I feel like there's not a lot of people like you. And so we, and we really need people that are as passionate about this as you are, um, to bring joy back into organization and systems and all of the things that dial down the chaos so we can be more in flow and really feel that sense of ease and true flexibility and and freedom in our business. Like you said, it's a good word. Thank you. So (laughs) we will share all the ways to connect with you in the show notes. Um, Is there anything specifically you want to point people towards? Um, So I'm on Instagram most, um, which you can find, find me at project love co Um, that's where I hang out. So send me a DM if you have any questions or anything like that, or if you want to just talk through anything, um, I'm always there and I'm happy to help. Beautiful. Well, thank you so much for being here and we'll be in touch. Sounds good. (laughs) Thank you so much for listening to Energetically You. I hope that this episode has helped you to tune into your natural energy sources so that you feel more energized and focused throughout your day. If you enjoyed the episode, please take a second to rate and review. Each review helps us to help more ambitious women just like you accomplish their goals. Don't forget to take a screenshot, share it on social or in your Instagram stories and tag me at Megan Swan Wellness. See you soon.